What's going on everybody? I'm Primal Liquid and welcome to my guide for Atelier Sophie 2. Now, in this video, I'm going to be going over Synthesis as a whole for you guys, ranging from the very basics all the way up to the more advanced things. And while yes, this video is more designed for new Atelier players, you know, the, the players who sort of came along in Riser or Riser 2, where Synthesis was quite a bit easier. Well, don't worry if you are someone from the Mysterious series or even longer than that. Don't worry, you're probably still going to learn a few things from this as well. So, let's get into it, shall we? Now, I think we'll start with how do you unlock recipes. Well, all the recipes pretty much come from the recipe book. This version is a lot worse than the Riser 2 recipe book, in my opinion. But essentially, the nitty gritty of it is there are four pages of this book. You have a page specific to Sophie. You have a page specific to Plakta. You have one that's shared, so these are recipes that they can both synthesize for you. And then you have the references. Now, all of these uh, recipes in the reference book are obtained from actual books that you either buy uh, or the ones that you find in treasure chests out in the map. Likewise, you can also get some of them from uh, events and things like that. So friendship events, story events, or what have you. These are, these are all the books. Now, when it comes to the actual recipes and how you get them, as you can see, uh, there are requirements on the right hand side just below the picture. So for example, in order to unlock the sickle, you simply need to hit three enemies with the staff. Uh, for the Sotia, you already start with that, likewise you start with the, uh, the Star Guide staff as well. Sunlight Aliador, you know, it just says hunt blue poonies, that means you have to go and defeat two poonies. You don't have to hit two of them on the field, as long as you actually defeat two in battle, you are fine. And then of course, the exploration is basically just a case of see an event. Now, there are going to be some items later on where you do have to do other things. For example, the exquisite pickaxe, you need to synthesize an understone, and you need to do three major gatherings using the pickaxe. Now, when it comes to these requirements, no matter how many times you do these things before the recipe is available, they will not count. These will only start tracking once you are actually able to learn the recipe. So unfortunately, unlike Riser 2, you know, you can't just blast your way through and lock pretty much the entire recipe book from the get-go. Most of these, you know, you're not gonna you're not gonna get very quickly, especially the uh, the later ones. However, what I do suggest doing is the moment you are able to learn a new recipe, stop everything and go and learn the recipe. It is very important. It will help you just astronomically in the long run. So that is how you learn the recipes. Now let's actually talk about the synthesis itself. When you start the game, you will only be able to synthesize with Sophie, you'll have very limited recipes, and you will not have a screen like this when you select a recipe. So, this is the Catalyst selection. You do not start the game with Catalysts, you will however get them through the, uh, the actual story, so do not worry, you cannot miss at least two of these, and your grid will also not be as big. When you start the game, you are forced to use a 5x5 five five synthesis grid. And yes, there will still be the uh, the elements on the actual grid. However, you will not have access to the restricted panel because they are locked behind catalysts. Now, as you can see on the item at the bottom right hand side, there are three elements currently there. There is two lightning elements, one fire and one light. Not only that, there are some bars that are red. Now, those red bars are not accessible on a standard panel. Likewise, if you have not yet unlocked the catalysts, you will not even be able to see them. They, are, they will just be completely, completely hidden. If you do want to see them, you have to wait until you get catalysts, unfortunately. And they are only accessible via the restricted panel. Even if you use items that will increase the max level of an element, 
you cannot go into the red bars unless you are using the restricted panel. Now, when it comes to the actual elements, it is a little bit like uh, Riser for those of you who are new to Atelier. Those of you who have played the Mysterious series before, you already know this, but essentially, on items, you have uh, very similar to Riser, where you have basically element levels. Where this Uni, for example, has three lightning levels, it has two fire and then two fire again. Now, unlike Riser, you actually have to place those levels on the board for them to take effect. Take notice as well of the squares and the stars. Squares, not that important. The stars are, because the stars are how you essentially get links. And the reason links are so important is, as you are going through the game, you will be doing character events. Now, these character events normally, in Atelier games, pretty much only reward you with you know, character information, a little bit of backstory on the character, or sometimes you'll gain new recipes. Well, one of the main things you will gain from Atelier, uh, sorry, Atelier Sophie 2, is you will actually gain their final weapons. So you will gain the recipe for the final weapons once they uh, are around near the end of the friend, uh, near the end of their friendship. What we actually want though, whoops, let me just put Plaxa back in. What we actually want though is quite simple. You see, as you go through their friend events, you will essentially start unlocking assist skills. Each character has their own version of assist skills. However, Sophie and Plaxa are the same because obviously you can use both of them for synthesis. So essentially, if you're synthesizing with Sophie, Plaxa is going to use the assist skills. If you're synthesizing with Plaxa, then Sophie is going to use the assess skills. Now, these assess skills have a variety of things that they do. The first one you unlock is a quality increase, and this will increase your quality depending on the number of links and on the element. So, Sophie and Plokta are light element, uh, Ramazal is fire, and then Alette is wind. Olius is water, aka ice, and finally the bold is lightning. So what makes these so important? Well, the first one isn't really anything like. To be honest, I never even noticed the difference with the uh, the quality increase. So let's move on. Now the elemental switch. What this does is once you gain a number of light links, you can essentially change any component on the board into a light element. So remember when we were looking at that uni before when it had the three uh, yellow elements, so three electric elements, if they were on the grid, I could change one of those boxes or the star to a light element. However, Keep in mind that even if I change a star to a light element, it will not become a link node. It will simply become a normal light element, basically. Now, below that is the link morph light. Now, this works exactly the same way as the element switch light. The only difference is I can turn any light node on the field, uh, on the synthesis board, into a light link. So think of the think of the stars. Basically, I can turn anything on the board into a light star, providing there is already something in that position. I can't just turn a blank spot, for example. Now, this is probably how you're actually going to be getting your final trait effect. Uh, fact, sorry, your final assist skill as well, because getting the link morph light not too difficult, because you only actually need eight link. Uh, sorry, seven links for that, and then you can actually use it. The final one is an extra ingredient which will allow you to place another item into the synthesis. Now, depending on the character, will depend on the item that you can place. Sophie and Plokta are magical items, Ramazal is fuel items, uh, gases for Alette, water for Olius, and metals for Diebold. Now, this is going to be incredibly, incredibly important when it gets to late game or end game synthesis because you are going to need the extra items to finish the effects. And likewise, when you're making weapons, armors, accessories, talismans, things like that, you are absolutely going to want the extra ingredient metal just so you can gain extra stats from it. 
So now that we've gone over the abilities for the characters and what makes them so good, let's actually talk about Synthesis itself properly. So right here we have the Uni. I'm just going to select a couple of random items here. It doesn't matter what, we're just going to talk about them to begin with. So as you start the game, again, my board is a little bit bigger. Yours will only be a 5x5 at the start. As you start going through though, you can get a 7x7. If you want to increase the size of your board, then you simply need to synthesize a new catalyst. Once you unlock a catalyst, you will also unlock the recipe for it, which will allow you to then resynthesize it to gain better effects. The starting catalyst only has the effect and then a 5x5 five five panel. As you start synthesizing it, you can increase the panels up to a maximum of 7x7. Seven seven. You can get components inverted, which allows you to rotate the elemental components on the board. And then you have components divided. Not really sure why it's called divided, because all that lets you do is actually flip it the other way, basically. I think that's just poor naming sense uh, on the uh, localization. Now, let's actually talk about the catalysts. So, there are a few different ones. There is the Grolia Catalyst, which increases the element's effect level by half of the number of element links. So, let's say I have uh, 10 lightning elements on the field at the moment. Five of them are linked. That essentially gives me a lightning level of 15, because it takes that initial 10, it, so it halves it, so it gives us the actual half of the uh, the link effect, and then that's added on to the total. The Grillia Catalyst is essentially how I pretty much reach all of my end game levels, simply due to the fact that the others are nowhere near as efficient for reaching such high levels on so many different elements at once, especially on the restricted panel. Right now, the restriction's not too bad because it's only a low level item. The higher ones, quite a lot more annoying to be honest. So next up we have the Limiteer Catalyst. Now this one is a little bit different in that uh, in addition to normal increases, each element's max effect will increase by half of the number of the links. So what this means is if you look down at the bottom right, you see where the fire element is? There are three different colors in that bar. There's the black color, a gray color, and then a red color. So the black bars are ones that we can fill up right now, no problem. All we need to do is place any red node on the board and we will get a red effect in that bar. The gray ones, however, you cannot fill until you unlock them. And in order to unlock them, you have to essentially create a link. Now, in order to create a link, you need to put two of the same elements next to each other, and they both have to be stars. Only stars can link together. Normal square boxes will not link. When it comes to the red bars, as I mentioned, you do need to have catalysts, and you do need to be on the restricted panel, and then that just turns them gray, so you do need the links again to further enhance and actually unlock those panels for you to then fill in. Now, the Limiteer Catalyst honestly is the most useless that I've come across. I have I can't even think of a use for this. It is so bad. Because even if you unlock the actual effects using the Limiter, if you actually want those effects, you still need to gain you know, enough boxes on there. And considering most endgame items and things like that, you are going to be using things that are just covered in stars. Completely redundant, in my opinion. So, next up we have the Rosalia Catalyst. Now, this one essentially makes it so any items you place on the grid will change colour of any other squares nearby. So, for example, if I was to place the yellow right there, and then I place a fire, because that fire was so... Like, because that fire is next to both of the other yellows, it turns them both red, and of course it gives me four red bars there. Now, if we actually look at links here for a minute, so right now, because I have two boxes there next to each other, the two stars, as you can see, they are a different color. They are much more vibrant color. That is a link. However, that is only one link. 
Because you see, when the game actually refers to Link, is it doesn't refer to the individual nodes that are linked. It refers to the lines between them. So, as you can see, the two right there, they do have a small line connecting them. That is one link. Also, if you look at the top of the synthesis board, pretty much right where the... Uh, the bit that I'm about to place is, you can see a 1 in the fire section, and that just tells you that we have one fire link. And of course, if I just uh, go back one, if you look at the fire on the bottom right, there are still two grey bars. If I go forward again, there's only one grey bar, and that's because we made that fire link, which gives us an extra bar that we can work on. Likewise, if I go ahead and place another fire element, that gives us another link, and it also advances the fire bar once more. So, again, even though we have three boxes there that are linked, we only have two links. Now, one of the most efficient ways for, you know, getting all the end game effects is essentially creating a box. Because if I just very quickly do this, so, right now, we have a, a normal box there, sort of. So, if I actually throw this middle one in, right now, we have four links. If I put this link in the middle here, it is going to connect to the left one, the right one, and the bottom one. This will then give us an extra three links, taking us from four all the way up to seven. And what that does is, we now have the first of the assist skills, so the first one is the element switch fire, and it does say that down in the bottom left. So this will turn any color on the board into a red square. It will not be a link square, it will just be a red one. You can use this on the same element as well if you just want to skip it, that is fine. But you cannot use it on an empty node or anything like that. There has to be a color in it for you to use this skill. So I'm just going to click that. Now because we went straight from four to seven, we also unlock the Link Morph Fire, which allows us to change any placed component in a fire, to a fire link. So any color on the board, we can change not only to a fire square, but also to a link fire square, which I've just done there. That was originally a normal fire square. However, now I have turned it into a fire link square, and this will also increase our link level up to eight. So, right now, let's go ahead and place two final fire links down, and that gives us a 9x9 nine nine grid. And as you can see, we're now on to 12 links for the element. And of course, that means we can also add an extra ingredient, which is fuel for Ramazel, because we have fire. Now, one of the things that we can do is, if I just choose any random item, doesn't matter what, wait, no, actually, I need a different, uh, different slot there. Right, so here I have three items. If I was to now overlap these fire nodes, so we just lost all those fire nodes, we've lost our links, we've lost the effects down in the bottom right. However, as you'll notice on the left side, we still have our extra item from reaching the 10 link stage. Now, you're not really going to use this like style of synthesis until you're making end game gear where you know maybe maybe a weapon an armor an accessory doesn't require lightning elements or you know you need to actually put an ingot in and things like that so all weapons accessories talismans you are going to be using lightning elements to get that extra ingot in for the extra stats most of the time though they will actually have a requirement for lightning now, this item in particular is a little bit of an easy one because it's only three elements. Three elements early on in the game can be incredibly difficult to max out. However, as you start going through, it does become easier and easier. You don't really start getting into any trouble until you need four different elements on the board at once, especially when you have to use the actual uh, catalyst so the restricted zone just like that. Okay, so with that said, let's now look at the Storager Catalyst. Now, the Storager is... It's an interesting one, to say the least. So, what this does is, 
when we actually create a bunch of links, the assist skills will not activate automatically. They will actually be saved and we can choose to activate them manually whenever we want. Now on paper, this sounds like a really good idea. However, so far I've not actually been able to really come up with a good way to use this yet so i do need to i do need to do more testing on this one myself because i do think it could be incredibly incredibly helpful but right now i'm just not sure on it uh after this we have the last one which is the absorptor catalyst now this is actually another really really interesting one that i haven't played around with enough but essentially what happens is when the assist skill is activated linked components disappear but effect level max level and quality are preserved so let me just show you what this actually means right there we have two uh, two stars but they are not linked now if i place this here that will create a link for us there will be three links right there and as you can see they disappeared the link at the top left has gone up the effect on the right has also increased but the grid itself has been cleared now this one realistically should be incredibly incredibly good for end game however one of the things i've personally noticed is getting the higher level effects is incredibly difficult because while you're losing all of those links you can't create double laps basically so what i mean by that is you can't create those square shaped panels on the board to get an easy 10 link to allow you to add the extra ingredients to finish off and all that so that is why when it comes to catalysts i do think growlia is the better growlia growlia is the best simply due to the fact it's easier to reach the high effect levels okay so now that we've gone through catalysts we've gone through general sympathy skills we've gone through the assist skills let's actually talk about materials so one of the one of the big things that originally came around from atelier riser was seeds and yes seeds are back thankfully however they are a little bit more tricky than originally in riser so when it comes to when it comes to seeds in Sophie 2, you will not be able to just instantly, you know, jump ahead to creating a perfect seed or anything like that. You are going to have to take your time with this and slowly work your way up using better materials that you get from the seeds. So right now, as you can see, my seeds are 999 quality. They've got all the XXL traits, which is the highest level effects that you can gain from them. And like the individual traits on the seeds don't actually matter. Now, what this means is whenever I place these seeds, I will gain items that are, you know, always like eight, 900 quality. I will pick up the most of them. They will grow quickly. I will be able to get rare items from them and they will have the best traits. Now, so far i've not found any traits that i cannot get from these uh, these seeds and likewise i've not really managed to find any item i can't get from these seeds there are a couple of individual items which just don't have gathering points unfortunately you can only get those from the um the request area because there is an npc there that you can trade certificates for for extra you know items and things like that a couple of them do seem to be exclusive to him or i just haven't found the way to get them yet now seeds are planted here right outside the atelier there are four different greenhouses that you can get one for each weather element in the game apart from wind because there are no wind element items in the game so there is the snow greenhouse the sunshine the rain and the thunderstorm each of the seeds can be planted in all four greenhouses that's perfectly fine and each element will give you the materials from that seed corresponding to that element so for example if i was to plant any seed in the snow greenhouse i would gain items from snowy weathered areas basically 
If I was to do it in the sunshine, I would get sunshine related materials. Rain is a lot of water based materials and things like that, or materials you can only gather in rainy weather. And likewise, thunderstorm is the same, it's materials that you can only gather in the thunderstorm area. Now, in Atelier Riser 2, you could gain the effect spread uh, abilities on items from seeds. Sophie 2 has a similar thing where you can also gain effects like that. However, they are much, much, much rarer. They're also not quite as good, in my opinion. So, right here we have fire level plus three, synth quantity plus one, and fire max level plus three. So, what these mean are the moment I place this item in a synthesis, it will instantly add plus three to the fire effect, and that's because of the fire level plus three. When the synthesis is finished, we'll gain an extra item because of the extra quantity reward, and the fire max level is unfortunately not that good in all honesty, because all that actually does is it increases the maximum level of the element. And when I say the maximum level of an element, what I mean is if I just start the synthesis, so by maximum level, I mean the little gray bars. So if you look at the physical damage XS at the bottom right, if that item, for example, was plus three thunder max element, if I was to use that item in this synthesis, then we would not have those three gray bars on the physical damage. We would just have black bars and the red bars because the plus three would give us those extra three gray bars, if that makes sense. And that is the same for all the elements. There are five elements total. There is lightning, fire, light, water, and wind. You will only ever need four, uh, uh, sorry, four different elements at once on a synthesis. Sometimes you will only need one, sometimes you'll only need two. Worst case scenario, you will need four different ones. And for items that do need four, well, good luck gaining all four effects because it's a pain. Well, I, I say it's a pain. Some are fine, some are not so fine. It depends on what items you can actually use in the synthesis, really. Right, so we've gone over seeds. We've gone over the materials you get from seeds. We've gone over general synthesis, how you unlock the recipes and things like that. Now we have pretty much one other main thing to talk about and that is going to be major gathering now major gathering is only available for your actual gathering tools so there is the sickle the fishing rod the pickaxe the bomb hammer the uh, the bug net and the slingshot the slingshot is a new item in sophie 2 and it's actually pretty fun to use, to be honest. It's just hard to see where it's actually usable because the uh, the gathering point isn't that big. So what we're going to talk about is going to be the actual major gathering. Now, major gathering, in order to use, you do need any form of gathering item, so even the standard sickle. And on that, when you make it, there will be an effect, which is it starts off at major gathering level 1, and it can go up to major gathering level 3. The higher the level of major gathering means you have either more time or more attempts at the mini game because yes it is a mini game now the reason why major gathering is so important is if i just go to a gathering spot right now and i can actually just show you basically so the major gathering spots are on the actual map they are basically the uh, the little uh, hexagons with the uh, like the uh, the scythe and the pickaxe in them. So I'm just gonna go for a tall torn here, it doesn't matter. Uh, let's get the extra link. So the extra link is going to be essentially extra stars. Now let's gain some uh, some extra elements, shall we? I don't really care about the elements here. So on this here is an all. That will give us an extra point on the right hand side for every single one. So an extra link, we'll gain extra quantity, we will get extra quality, and we'll also gain a bit of money for uh, as well. So right now I have two links, which is realistically all we want. Like we don't want extra quantity, we don't care about the quality, we definitely don't care about the coal anyway. And let's, oh great, I missed one. 
Oh well, it's not the end of the world. So let's just get a random element, it doesn't matter what. Okay, we got another lining. That is perfectly fine. So now looking at that, as you can see on the left hand side, I know it did move a little quick. But let's go ahead and take a look at these. So right now, as you can see, there is three lightning stars, two lightning stars, three lightning stars. Uh, two, three, three, you know, three, three, two, and so on and so forth. It's going to be some items like these that you are going to need for unlocking high tier effects. Now, granted, once you actually get to proper end game and you are using seed items, it's not going to be as important for using Major Gathering. However, as you're, you know, early game, mid game, or you've not quite really reached proper end game just yet, Major Gathering is going to be a really, really good source of early element levels. And that's going to allow you to really blitz through and get the extra, you know, the extra effects from the synthesis materials because it just lets you really combine things very, very quickly. Uh, let's see, is that, so Tall Torn here for the Elixir. I just do that by date. Okay, so we'll use uh, we'll use some of the Tall Tons that I just got, and then we'll just throw in anything, really. So as you can see right now, we've got three there, and that's pretty much straight off the bat, a, you know, a four link there. However, now I could just do something like that, and boom, we're straight up to an eight link already. That's that's literally just how simple it actually is using Major Gathering. The downside here is it is kind of forced, unfortunately, early on, especially for some of the more, you know, the more awesome effects anyway. But you will not need Major Gathering for story progression, so do do keep that in mind. That's only really for if you actually want to create things early, or if you just want to make something really, really good. And of course, all the gathering tools are on the recipe idealist. list. Again, the moment you have access to a new recipe, go ahead and unlock it, because like you, you want to get these gathering tools ASAP just so you can actually get further through on the synthesis itself. Anyway though guys, uh, that pretty much about covers everything for synthesis in Atelier Riser 2. If you have, uh, Riser 2, <laughs> Sophie 2. And of course, if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to comment down below and I will answer to the best of my ability. But with that said, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have or the video has helped, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you're new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well so you don't miss any more guides for Sophie 2. As always though everybody, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.